Okay, so jumping back in, we have this amount here is what, what I would do to find out what 10% could be. That's one way of looking at this problem. I haven't solved it yet, so I'm gonna pause right there and let's look at another way. If I wanna find a 10% discount and find out what they're actually gonna pay, I could also consider doing it this way. I can take the whole amount, 100% of the 15,840, and then I need to take away 10%, so minus 0.10, right, times the total amount, 815,840. At this point now, I can combine things. There's my one and my negative 0 0.10. So I have one minus 0 0.10 times 15,840. In this case here, one minus 0 0.1 becomes 0 0.90 times 15840. This problem here will give me the actual final answer for after the discount, how much will they pay? Because what they're gonna pay is that there's a 10% discount, they're gonna pay only 90%, that's what's left after you take 10 away from 100, of that amount right there. So 90% of that amount is written out as 0 0.9 times 15840. When you work this out, you arrive at 14,256, okay? So this is the way I think they're looking for you to solve this problem, but let's go back real quick to this one. If I take a look at this problem here and I say, well, what would I have arrived at? Or what, what number would I have gotten here? This is 10% of 15,840. So 15,840 times 0.1 is gonna equal $1,584. That's a 10% discount. So this represents the amount of money they actually are gonna be saving. That is the discount amount. That doesn't though say what the customer will pay for the vehicle. To find that, what I would need to do, would I'd have to take the price 15,840 and subtract the discount, which is 1,584. When I do that, what happens then is I end up with 13 minus eight is five, and two, and four, and one. What I end up by subtracting that is with 14,256. Notice that this number is the same one that's right here, okay? So you can arrive at the solution two different ways. This way, we're taking the 100% minus the 10% discount and turn that into a 90% of the total cost, right? Or the retail cost to get the solution. Over here, we find out just the discount of 10% and we subtract that from the total cost. So both methods work. The difference is here, I'm actually just subtracting the value of the retail minus the discount. And over here, what I'm subtracting are the percents, 100% minus the 10% discount. So there's always a bit of subtraction going on. That's true in both cases. And the multiplication that I do is always involving the 15,840. Here with the 10% and here with the 90%. All right, so two different ways of looking at that there. Are you ready for more? The car dealership pays a salesperson a bonus extra for selling the car equal to 6.5% of the sales price. All right, how much commission did the salesperson lose when they decided to offer a 10% discount? All right, so we have to think about both ways. If he sold it for 15,840, if he did the retail price, he would have had a bonus of 6.5% of whatever that is. So it's 6.5%, we can write this way, just a little more clear for you. So 6.5% of 15,840. That's what he could have had, right? If there was no sale. So that becomes 0.065 times 15,840. When we multiply that out, you have 10,000, or we're sorry, not 10,000, 1,029 dollars and 60 cents. But if he only gets 6.5% of the sale price, which was 14,256, that becomes 0 0.065 times 14,256, which equals 926 dollars and 64 cents. So if he had did not give a discount, he would have made that much. Because he made the discount, he only gets that much. But the question wants to know is how much did they lose by giving the discount? That's gonna be found by discovering the difference. 
So I would subtract what I could have made and what I did make and end up with $102.96. This is how much he lost by giving a discount. Same time, he made a sale, so at least he made money, right? So he still made $900 even though he lost that. Maybe if he didn't get the discount, he wouldn't even got any money. Hard to say. Let's look at activity number three. Commission at a gym. For each gym membership sold, the gym keeps $42, and the employee who sold it gets $8. What is the commission the employee earned as a percentage of the total cost of the gym membership? Well, the total cost is going to be found by, first of all, doing the $42 a gym gets and the $8 the employee gets for $50. So the gym membership is going to be $50 to join the gym. And in our situation here, it says for each gym or so the commission, we want to know the commission that the employee earned as a percentage of the total. The employee is $8, so he gets to keep $8 out of 50. Okay. I could do the math and do eight divided by 50, but because I like how the number 50 works in terms of its relationship to 100, right? I'm gonna go five, 50 times two is 100, so eight times two is 16. 16 divided by 100 is 0.16. And if I wanna make that into percentage, we hop over two spaces and we get 16%, okay? And I could have done the same thing, 8 divided by 50 is also going to be 0.16, and we get 16%. If an employee sells a family pass for $135, what is the amount of commission they get to keep? Hmm, that's a great question. Well, what we know is that they get a 16% of whatever they're selling. So if, if they get 16% of the total, okay, if that's going to be the same commission amount, it's not very clear here if that's true because we know here they get $8 of every 50. This is a family pass. So let's assume that they're going to get a 16% commission. So if they were to get 16% of $135, what would they get? Well, we turn that into a 0.16 of into multiplication times 135, and that's going to equal $21.60. And that's the idea for that third part there okay so that was a bit of the lesson today and so again looking at your summary just keep in mind that there are many everyday situations where a percentage of an amount of money is added to or subtracted from that amount where it's added to or subtracted from that amount in order to be paid to somebody right so when we look at things like sales tax is added tip is added interest is added a mark up is added but a mark down is subtracted and a commission is also going to be subtracted from the payment that is collected okay so just some things to keep in mind as you move forward in today's homework so take a moment to do your homework press pause and then come back and check it out All right, so here's your homework for tonight. So the car dealership pays $8,350 for a car. They mark up the price by 17.4% to get the retail price. What is the retail price? All right, so we could do this one of two ways. We could do one times 8,350 plus the markup 17.4% times 8,350 and rewrite that as one times 8,350 plus, move it over two spaces, 0.174 times 8,350, right? I could do it this way. I could combine with this to become 1.174 times 8,350, and I can multiply that out. Or I can remember that because it's a markup, what I'm gonna do is move that over to be 0.174 to begin with, and I'm gonna to have to be adding that amount to the whole amount, which is the one, and I multiply that by 83.50, okay? So you could begin the point now where you're just seeing that that becomes the markup. I'm adding a one to that percent value right there. It's the same thing done here, but here we broke it down into two parts to then combine them back together. That matches that. So now when I multiply those two things together, I get $9,802.90 
for what the retail price is going to be. And that's true for both of them. That's the same thing. Number two, a store has a 20% off sale on pants. With this discount, the price of one pair of pants before tax is 1520. What was the original price? Okay, so think of it like this. We have some pants, we'll call them P. And we're gonna multiply by not 80%, but I get a 20% discount, right? Oops, just should have done that. I get 100 minus 20, which means I'm only gonna pay 80% of the initial price. Moving that over, I can multiply by 0 0.80. So the pants are gonna be 80% of the original cost. And in this case here, that sale price was $15.20. So to find the amount the pants were originally, we divide both sides by 0 .80, 0 .80. 15.20 divided by 0 .80 is gonna be equal to $19. So the pants initially were a cost of $19 before the 20% discount. Number three, Lynn is shopping for a couch with her dad and here's some ask the salesperson, how much is your commission? The salesperson says that her commission is 5.5% of the selling price, 5.5%. So 5.5 can be written as 5.5 as a percentage, but as a decimal, we'll move it over here and have 0 0.055 as what that looks like as a decimal value. Okay, so how much commission will the salesperson earn by selling a couch for $4.95? We'll do the commission, 0 0.055 and multiply that by the price of the couch to find out how much they're gonna earn. And in that case there, 0.055 times 4.95 is $27.23 for selling that one couch. How much money will the store get from the sale of the couch? Well, the store will get what's left. We do a 495.00 minus the commission, what the salesperson gets, and what the store is left with then is $467.77 is how much the store gets. So a salesperson gets that amount and the store gets that amount. Let's look at number four. A college student takes out a $7,500 loan from the bank. What will the balance of the loan be after one year, assuming they've made no payments? All right, well, if it charges 3.8% interest each year, we're gonna take our, you gotta be careful here, right? We need to take what we're what we're doing we're going to do you still owe the original right so that's the one times seven thousand five hundred and we're going to add to that three point eight percent moving the decimal over that becomes point zero three eight okay so plus point zero three eight times seventy five hundred again i can rewrite that as one point zero three eight and multiply that by 7,500. And so when we do that together in our calculator, we have 1.038 times 7,500. We end up with $7,785. So if you borrow $7,500 at that interest rate, after one year of doing nothing, you now owe that additional amount. If you're looking at a bank that charges 5.3% interest, Again, that becomes 0 0.053, but we're gonna have to add that to the original, so we put the one in front. So we're gonna be doing 1.053 times the loan amount, and we multiply that together. We end up with, let's do this here, 1.053 times 7,500 becomes $7,897.50. So you get a little, you don't have to pay as much back, you, you owe less with a smaller interest rate. So you wanna look for a small interest rate when you can. And let's take a look at number five, our last one for the day. Number five, we have a series of several situations and it wants us to match the situation with the equation on the right. Our situations on the left are all dealing with fractions and we can tell it on the right that all those fractions have been converted into various decimals. But we are also have to recognize that sometimes we're taking away or adding. It goes back to our idea, idea of one times x plus let's say you had one tenth times x, right? That becomes one and one tenth 
of x, and so now it's converting that to decimal. But that's just kind of your idea of what you're doing, whether it be adding, maybe subtracting. So it says May slept for x hours, and Kieran slept for one tenth less than that, right? So that's one times x minus one tenth less than that, one tenth less than that, x. So this becomes one times x minus one tenth is written as 0 0.10, or can be, times x. So what is one minus 0 0.10? That's also simply 0.9, and we keep our x where it is. So we have 0.9x is what that looks like. That matches here for a. Okay, let's look at the next one. Kieran practices piano for X hours and may practice for two-fifths less, two-fifths less. All right, as a decimal, two-fifths is the same as 0 0.40. So it's one minus 0 0.40, which is 0 0.60X, okay? And that's gonna match right here, 0 0.6, which is choice B. May drank X ounces of juice. Kieran drank four-thirds more. Right, so four thirds more. Four thirds of the decimal is one point, and it's a repeating one, three three. It just goes on forever. But we have to add that to the original, which is one. So one plus one point three three is two point three three x. So looking at our choices, that matches this one right here, choice C. Kieran spent X dollars and may spend one fourth less. That's point two five. So that's going to be 1 minus 0.25, which is 0.75x, which matches this one right here. May ate x grams of almonds. The current ate 1.5 times more than that. So it's 1 plus 1.5 times more, which becomes 2.5 in total, x, which matches this guy right there. Kieran collected X pounds recycling. May collected three tenths less. Three tenths less is 0.3. But I saw I'll do one minus 0.3, which becomes 0.7 X. And that's gonna match right here for F. And May walked X kilometers, and Kieran walked three eighths more than that. Three eighths more. Well, three eighths is the same as 0.375. You can use a calculator to figure that out if you like to. So I have to take the original and add that to, one, to 0.375. So I get 1.375x, and that's gonna be what I get for G. And H, Kieran completed X puzzles and May completed three-fifths more. Three-fifths more is the same as 0.6, and we're gonna add that to our original one. So we have 1.6x for choice H. That's it for today. Have a great one, we'll see you next time.